Hello everybody and welcome back to Anime on Draft. This is episode 20. I'm your host again this week, Alec. Uh, I'm joined here with my two co-hosts, Rolando. Hi dad. And Drewson. Hi dad. Hello dad. Um, so Hello, today dad. we've... <laughs> today... <laughs> We're gonna have to like link that or something. Today, today we've got um, the, the our typical show. We're gonna be talking about Soccer Quest, New Game Gamers, Classroom of the Elite. But we also have a beer from one of my favorite breweries of all time, Belching Beaver Brewery. They make my fa- one of my favorite beers. The uh, Zumbar Chocolate Coffee Stout is definitely probably my favorite. But Belching Beaver makes the peanut the peanut butter milk stout. And it's delicious. Today we've got the Mexican chocolate peanut butter stout. Although sometimes it's the Mexican chocolate peanut butter milk stout. Um, so whatever the bottle says that you get, there you go. Um, so let's read the uh, the information here. It's seven point five percent alcohol by volume, oh God. and uh, mm. so it's a you know it's a a strong one. And well, how about Rolando? You uh, you picked it, so you want to go ahead and. Read the side of the bottle. Uh, okay. Give us some insight. Mexican chocolate PB stout. Formerly named Viva La Bieber and prior Living La, v- Living La Bieber Loca. Wow. This is like a tongue twister. They yeah. They're trying I was to get voted you. down on that one. I don't know whoever is writing this. Oh, Tom. Tom is writing this. We Fucking changed Tom. the name to highlight the key flavors of this award winning beer. With notes of creamy peanut butter, cinnamon, and chocolate, this decadent milk stout is the perfect dessert beer to finish off your meal. Currently our highest rated beer, receiving numerous gold and silver medals. Sink your teeth into this liquid chocolate treat. Welcome to the Beaver family. Cheers, Tom. Fucking Thanks, Tom, Tom, dude. Thanks, Tom. Fucking Thank you, Tom. Tom. He Thanks, was voted man. down. I don't know why he was voted down for living La Beaver, living La Beaver Loca. Yeah. It's easy to say. It's uh, apparently a funny not. name. Like, we both messed up. <laughs> it's, it's like, not it's, easy like to say. it's like pretty racist. <laughs> like, <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Um, so, anyways, uh, you know, Rolando, you picked this one. What what kind of steered you towards it? Well, I mean, it's our twentieth uh, episode, right? Mm-hmm. So. Uh, it's a, it's quite a milestone, and also we started with me picking the peanut butter milk stout from Belching Beaver, so I figured we'd bring it back to the roots, um, and go with the new variant. Or I guess I don't know how new this variant is. It's probably been around for a while. I think it's been around for a little while, but the new variant <laughs> for us, for us, yeah. yeah. So it's new for us, yeah, but um. It. Yeah, I haven't tried it yet, and I'm pretty excited because I love the peanut butter stout, and Belching Beaver does really good stouts, so it should be good. Did you guys pour yours out already? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The one thing I have to note is you pour it out, and you get a really big, thick head, and then poof, it just disappears. It was it gone in, co- in 60 seconds, like it the was movie. A, it was a great color, too. It was like that chocolatey, dark <clears throat> um, head color, and it was nice, mm-hmm. and, and now it's gone. Yeah, it's a really cool looking head. So enjoy it while it lasts because it, it dissipates quick. While you're pouring it, you're like, this is going to fade quick because it's like super mm-hmm. airy looking and bubbly. Mm-hmm. And then it's just like poof, gone. So it's got a nice I mean, smoky smell to it, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The color is what you expect, but it's kind of browner. It's like dark, but it's like a brown dark. Not quite like that super dark black stout mm-hmm. that you kind of think about but it's uh i bet it's smoky because of the cinnamon because i know when you had the peanut butter one it didn't smell like this yeah i do Ooh. smell the peanut butter still it's good that is good Ooh, that's really good i wish yeah, it was really more good. i wish it was more cinnamony though well there's no cinnamon on the name so <clears throat> but i mean it's mexican oh chocolate, are we like, assuming are we assuming um, racial, cultural stuff in 2017? Well, I mean, when you when you eat or when you drink Mexican hot chocolate, it's like the primary component is fucking cinnamon. Are we assuming, are, are we assuming racial spices? Racial wow. spice in 2017. <laughs> racial spice. <laughs> it is a little less cinnamony than I expected, though, as well. Um, 
it does, you know, it's got the peanut butter from like the, the regular peanut butter stout with mm-hmm. the chocolate. So it is really good. It's, it's like they took the peanut butter stout, which was already really good. And they added the chocolate and stuff and it makes it just like different. <clears throat> but I think, I don't know. Yeah, better. I, th- I think what helps is the base that they start with is that milk stout and their milk stout is just really it's fucking really good. good. Yeah. And yeah. then, so you yeah, just add like ones. peanut butter to it. And it's great. You add Mexican hot chocolate and it's fucking great. Like, and peanut butter. <laughs> yeah, you, they just keep adding things to this like milk stout, and it's just mm-hmm. good because the, I think the base is really good. Um, mm-hmm. Now this is it's quite like a departure from last cooking. week's stout. Mm. Yes, this is a, quite a contrast so, in quality. So glad I don't have any more of those. God, <laughs> oh so I have one because off. I refuse to drink it. <laughs> yeah, I'm it's like, really bad. no, I'm not gonna do this to myself. Like I ended that last episode with just like. For whatever reason, it like super dehydrated me or something. But I ended that last episode with just pain in my right eye. I'm like, I can't open my eye. By the end of the episode, I'm like, please, let's stop recording. My head hurts. My eyeball is just perma shut. Like, I can't. I just I can't do this right now. It's like so, sick, sickeningly sweet. And I hate mm-hmm. sweet. Like It wasn't it wasn't even for me. And I don't mind sweet things. It was too sweet for me. It was like funky. Whereas like this one is really sweet as well. But it's like. Got those smoky components and things like that that really balance it out. And the peanut butter is more savory mm-hmm. than sweet. And so it balances it out really well. So this one is much better than the the marshmallow stout of last week. I mean, it's like Drew said. Like, the base of this beer is already a really good beer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, their milk stout is dope for sure. Um, other than that, it's pretty simple it's toasty i wouldn't say it's roasty it's toasty it's like light mm-hmm. it's not like burnt toast it's like a toasted toast <laughs> yeah toasted it, it, bread. it's kind of it's kind of more like um if you, you feels it feels closer to like a cup of coffee mm-hmm. yeah Do you think they than- use like a, a darker chocolate because i think this the chocolate flavor for this in me is definitely like i'm getting more of like the bitter notes from it yeah so i think, I think they might use like a darker chocolate as opposed to the the peanut butter chocolate stout or whatever it's I like because so. it's, it's like, like more of a milk chocolate they're already using a lot of sweet components so you mm-hmm. don't want to make it too sweet yeah, yeah the um I, the I peanut butter stout too, has no so. chocolate oh, i love dark chocolate too the peanut butter stout has no chocolate it's just peanut butter on that one isn't it that was the chocolate zumbar there, there was chocolate the zumbar there, coffee chocolate stout has chocolate i, I, I don't know but uh yeah it has to be dark chocolate because it isn't super sweet it's like it's more savory, I guess. Bitter. Type of chocolate. I like dark chocolate better than regular chocolate. I don't like chocolate, but I like... I like I'm milk chocolate. If, if I'm going to eat chocolate, I'm going to eat dark chocolate. Yeah, I like mm-hmm. dark chocolate better than milk chocolate. Like I said, that's I have like, a sweet tooth. Milk chocolate all the way. <laughs> but that's a that's a like big point of con- uh, like, uh, contention. It's like uh, people either like really like or really don't like dark chocolate as far as mm-hmm. I've had conversations with people, so... <clears throat> I don't know. I like it. I don't like it alone. I'll eat it with like, cause I, I, there are these things I have at home. It's, um, it's like peanut butter, dark chocolate, and then mixed nuts, like in a bar, you know, like one of those kind of things. And I like dark chocolate in that kind of setting or in like uh seized candy when it's like something else, but just straight dark chocolate. It's too bitter for me. But I like it in mole. It's good in, in that. Yeah. In, in mole. In mole. In mole. <laughs> oh, in mole. In mole. Yeah, yeah mole. mole. Nice. Ew, mole. chocolate in mole. chocolate and food. What? <laughs> oh, that fucking post. That was <laughs> the dumbest thing I've ever read. <laughs> chocolate and food. Ew, who does that? Okay, all right. Chocolate in, in a savory in a savory dish. What? <laughs> Ew, idiot. Someone's clearly but, not very cultured. No. <laughs> <Clearly>. <laughs> but uh, so all in all, I think this is delicious um let's go uh rolando you picked the beer so what do you think of it okay well, let me take another sip throw it over to you Whoop-yow. just get that get that smell <sighs> get a nice whiff um it's got a it's got a very nice you know smoky smell and then when you take a sip There's not too much carbonation, so it's not leaving you 
feeling like, oh, man, there's like a ton of bubbles in my mouth. And mm-hmm. so it lets you kind of enjoy the the actual flavor a bit more. And I said this when we talked about the that Zumbar coffee stout. Mm-hmm. And um, that was a very simple set of flavors. And I think in terms of stouts, if you go too complex, it's starts to detract but if you're too simple it's not like so good i mean last week was a good example it was just too simple too sweet this week it, it was uh, like this stout you, we already know the the belching beaver milk stout it's a good good base the peanut butter milk stout is good as well this like the the mexican chocolate aspect it adds kind of like a like a new, I guess, depth to it. So mm-hmm. like they're still going simple, but it's not like complex per se. Cause you know, like it's like three flavors, like yeah. on top yeah. of the stout. So mm-hmm. I, I do kind of agree that I wish there was a bit more of a cinnamon aspect, but it may be hard to get that in here without sort of overpowering everything else. So I don't know. This is this is good. I still like the peanut butter um, milk stout, um, but this is probably on par with it. So I'm going to give it like a four and a half. Generous. Nice. Uh, Drew, what do you think? Boom. Um, yeah, you pretty much hit all the things that I wanted to talk about. Um, I mean, and just judging by how much I've drank already just sitting here my yeah, first glass is class. gone <laughs> yep. like it's just it's super drinkable and it's just like it it it's the flavors are simple enough but they all come together really well and you just want to drink more of it um with that said i'll probably give it like a four <clears throat> yeah i'll give it a four it, it's good it's um it's one of the better stouts that i've had um definitely would buy it again for sure awesome and that's coming from IPA lover man Drew over here. So yeah, he doesn't it's really like for, stouts, and he gave it yeah, a four. Yeah, you don't even, and he gave it a four. So if yeah, you're not I a big stout man. fan, give this a try. What did, what did I give the one last week? Like a two point something? Like uh, <coughs> you gave week, it, you uh, gave it higher than I did. You gave it a two point really? seven. Yeah. Two point seven, and then Rolando gave it two point two point seven. What is wrong with me? <laughs> yeah, after you had more, you were like, "Nah." None I of thought this. it was pretty generous. Yeah, yeah if, if if I if I if I would have rated it at the end of the of the podcast, I would have rated it like a one point seven five, probably. Yeah, like, I kind of feel the same way. If I had felt the way I did at the yeah. end, I would have been like, "This shit's garbage." <laughs> really, yeah, we, like, need to, we need to it, we need to tweet tweet updated it, scores from that. <laughs> yeah, be like, is, we're, we're updating. If we if we were like doing these podcasts with video, you would probably see me not drinking the beer after the review <laughs> because I just stopped drinking it. Right. I just like, drank no. it because I wanted to get rid of it. I was like, get out of my house. Like you right. disgust me. Like <laughs> I'm gonna see know. if uh, if I can pawn it off on the last one on somebody. Um, I agree with you guys. I definitely think it's really good. The one thing I actually, I think my favorite aspect of this beer is when you get that, you know, you stick your nose in the glass and you get a good whiff of the beer. It's like, so one of my favorite things just in life is when you go into a coffee shop and you have that like mocha coffee smell, just like bombard your senses when you first walk in. Mm, that, yeah, I yeah, love yeah. that smell. And when you smell this, it's like I walked into a coffee shop. And so smelling this, it's like you get that whole like nostalgic sensation of having a good time and going into a coffee shop in this cup. And I love that. So for me, everything else you guys said, I agree with like the flavor, um, a little more cinnamon would be cool, but it's probably hard. The carbonation is low, but that really brings out how creamy it is. Like the milk stout aspect and all that. One thing I do wish is the head would stick around longer, but it's just, it doesn't. Oh, well. Um, but so I'm probably going to give this a 4.5 as well with uh, Rolando. It's you, really um, good. High five. But the sum bar was 4.75 <laughs> there over the internet. You, uh, you, you brought up a good <laughs> point too. Um, whereas you like, you think of carbonation, you think of like that meaning ease of being able to drink or drinkability, whatever you want to call it. <coughs> but this kind of proves that wrong. Like you don't need a ton of carbonation for it to be smooth and, you know, be easily drinkable. So mm-hmm. just uh, a side note there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the creaminess on this one 
since it's like I would rather have a creamy stout than a really carbonated stout just because you don't get the toasty notes with the carbonation because the carbonate because the toasty aspect of stouts comes first. <clears throat> That's like the mm-hmm. first thing you taste. And if you have a lot of carbonation, the first thing you taste is like the I, I want to call it spiciness, but it's not like spicy, but like, you know, the pokiness of carbonation, the air. And it, yeah, the air it kind of and it washes you know, away uh, that initial flavor. You know, what would be interesting is if they nitro brewed this mm. um, or had like the nitro pour or whatever. I think that would make it pretty interesting. Um, adding in a little bit more of like artificial carbonation to it through the process. Mm-hmm. I think that would be would make it uh, interesting. You get the head to yeah. stick around for a lot longer. It would right? also be a uh, lot could, smoother carbonation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We could get a uh, a growler and then figure out a way to jerry rig it. We'll just <laughs> nitro it ourselves, guys. No, you just <laughs> find out find out Belching Beaver's Twitter handle and then tweet at them and say like, "Hey, you should nitro Yo. brew this." <laughs> and then you can credit us. <laughs> right. And then the only yeah. thing we ask for is that you whenever we want to like go into like your kids. brewery, we get we get to drink it. <laughs> we get to drink this one that we helped with for free. The rest we'll still we pay kegs. for, but this one for free. <laughs> uh I don't think that's gonna happen, but we can try. We'll try. Um anyways, so definitely a great beer. Um good pick, Rolando. I am particularly happy with this pick just because I'm a big stout guy. So I appreciate it. I've been wanting to try it and now I have. So woot. Yeah. Um, and now but, you have, oh, and yeah. now I have, but moving on <clears throat> to our first topic of the day, uh, st- first anime of the day topic anime. Anyways, soccer request. Uh, we actually have a lot of stuff that happened in this episode and I was pleasantly surprised. And so I had to take a couple notes so I wouldn't forget cause I watched it. A while ago but um yeah so i'm actually i'm gonna start this off and ask you drew after watching this has any of your opinions of maki or anything like that changed or you still have the similar feelings or how are you feeling now no she's still boring and basic <laughs> um i mean you can you can literally predict everything that's going to happen they say oh uh, we're going to u- revive the school and have, you know, different types of culture things go on in each classroom. And the first thing I thought of when they said that is she's going to start an acting troupe. Again, are and you assuming lo and culture? behold, and lo and behold, she starts an acting troupe. I mean, her story is like fine, like, it, it, but it's just it's basic. Her dad, we know her dad loves her. He took a bunch of pictures of the play. Um, we knew she was going to fail her um, audition, and she fails it in the most brutal way, but I'll let you guys talk about that. Vicious. Um, she comes back, and she's, like, recharged somehow, like, just got brutally murdered, pretty much, and, and is like, I'm going to take this in stride, and my acting career's done, but I'm going to go back, and I'm going to write this play, and we're going to bloody this Santa Claus, and then we're going <laughs> to make an acting troupe. It, I mean... It, I, I, I said it um, before when I was <laughs> typing to you or whatever. I said, like, you know, there's, like, a bunch of good feels in this episode. But as a character, to me, she's still very basic. Still just dull. Yeah, I mean, um, it is what it is. <clears throat> yeah, so... It's predictable. <laughs> I, um... I guess I, I dislike her a little bit, a little less. Um, I... She is still a little more. boring <laughs> a little. I dislike her a little more. No, I dislike her a little less just because uh, I mean, I, w- I don't <clears throat> dislike her. I just think she's boring mm-hmm. and predictable. Right. Um, I get for me, it was because like when so at the end of last episode, she just kind of it seemed like she's like, yeah, I'm totally going to go do this. But like with the way they did this episode, it kind of felt like it felt less like a rush development in her and more like uh, something an a actual person would do, you know, like all these people are cheering me on. All right. Yeah, I'm going to do it, you know, and you kind of do it on a whim and then it's just like a last ditch effort or whatever. So it kind of felt less like mm-hmm. it came out of nowhere in the last episode for me like this. It felt like it made it seem more real um, rather than just be like, oh, the episode's going. Yeah, I'm going like out of nowhere. So it, it, it mm-hmm. made a little more sense, I guess, after that to me. So I kind of like that. Um, but I still think, <clears throat> um, 
I forgot what I was going to say. But I still, she is pretty boring and predictable. Um, <laughs> and uh, like otherwise, but you know, she's a little better now. Um, and obviously we have no resolution with her dad. So there's still going to be more develop air quotes, development for Maki, I'm sure. No, I mean, that's, she's kinda... that's all there's, that's all there's going to be because they, they showed like the dad with the photo album and they kind of had like their little, like, Oh, I kind of respect you. You kind of respect me. You know, it is what it is. That, this is all we're going to get from them. I'm, what? I'm no. pretty convinced of that. There's she's totally going to be more. She's still going to get some more development. There's four episodes left. She's still going to get something. Um, yeah, like her, so. her, her main, like, shit, that's going to be done, but mm-hmm. there is still going to be a little bit for, for, for everybody. The main thing <clears throat> now is getting this whole cultural festival, not cultural festival, this whole, is it a spiritual festival festival it's, revival it's a fucking festival it's like some a, random they don't they don't even they don't even, they don't even know what it was for no. like it's, it's for the dragon it's yeah there there's that the serpent. and then there's there's still going to be development for yoshino who has, still hasn't realized that what she likes doing is this and then there's still mm-hmm. Ririko <clears throat> trying to you know do her weird stuff like i thought this episode she was kind of weird like she was just more odd. weird. She's yeah. super, super yeah. weird. Like and when she just talking, kept going, like, <laughs> ag, ag, <laughs> yeah. what are you doing? Know, like, like, she are you, you Aero Manga Sensei? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, she reminds you. She reminds you of Sagiri, dude. <laughs> but, yeah, like you. So um, <laughs> hey, look, you're just doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Can't stop. Won't stop. <laughs> um, the. There's still going to be, you know, some small stuff for like Sanai and and Shiori and Maki. Like, it's not going to be like major development, but like we'll still see like them all, like kind of come together and like. Mm-hmm. If in, if anything that's going to happen, there she's going to go up to her dad and be like, "Are you the Santa Claus who repaired my drum?" And he'll be like, "Yes, I love you." And then they'll hug it out and it'll be over. That's what's going to happen. Well, I mean, she already was. <laughs> In the play, she was Santa Claus was her dad. Yeah. So it only makes sense that he used the name Santa Claus to repair the mm-hmm. drum at the end. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then she's gonna be like, "Did you do this?" And he's gonna be like, "Yes, I did." And then she's gonna be like, "I love you." And then it's gonna be over. If if anything, if anything. You the didn't, play had you a didn't lot feel of feels. Anything? From that, Drew, you didn't feel anything. No, no. I'm, a, I'm a, I'm, a stu- I'm, s- <laughs> I'm, s- I'm so like from my life experiences, like I'm so desensitized and like dead inside that it's like, it was, it was a feels good episode. But I mean, at the same time, it's like you're a boring person, so I can't feel that much for you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Takes one to know one. Oh. Oh, so you're dead inside. I mean, too. I'll- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I thought the, the play did have a lot of like, it was a real feel good kind of play. It also had some pretty funny moments. Like they did a pretty good job with the, the whole play at the end and then throwing in that like mosaic and stuff. I was like, this, you know, feels good. Like you, like you said, feels, what did you, I forget what you typed, but feels good, man, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing that you mentioned at the beginning was the, uh, how she got, uh, she like failed her audition or whatever. Oh my God. <clears throat> and it was just so brutal. brutal. It was so brutal. Rolando, you were talking about That was the best this. part of the episode. <laughs> Dude, that wow. was the best part of the episode. Brutal. I was like, yes. Listen I was like, guy. yes. <laughs> Chop her down. Listen to this Mo- guy. Cut Moe, her down. Moe for life. Moe for life. Listen to this, dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's that was just brutal. jealous. That was He's just jealous. She's thing. so happy. Dude, it was so I, brutal. You know you know how, how awesome I thought that part was? I laughed when it happened. I was like... <laughs> Dude, it that was, was that was tonight, dude. Vicious, that dude. was tonight. It was you're so tonight. vicious. You're a vicious person. <laughs> so, Rolando, mm-hmm. you were you, you recount the story that you told us about your how you felt while you were watching that when you were. All so, right. Well, so, I mean, so, yeah. Like the episode starts off, and it's like they're in Tokyo. <clears throat> Maki's at the callbacks for the audition, and so everyone's lined up. And they're like, "All right, so we're gonna call some names," um, and please step forward when we call your name. So like they call these girls, they're all excited. Like, Oh my gosh, like I got picked. And then like they call Maki, she walks up and she smiles. She's like, Oh my gosh, did I get picked? And then they're like, all right, all of you that step forward, 
you can leave. <laughs> and then the fuck out. I just Get yelled, the "Fuck out of here!" Oh shit. <laughs> <Just like, yeah. laughs> that was so vicious holy shit oh my that was god so fucking brutal like how it was, like i was tired you just like tight. this is what they were doing they were like they were dangling the carrot on the stick in front of them and they're like hey look here here I'm like oh yeah yeah and then what they did was they just fucking took it away and replaced it with a turd they're just like <laughs> you know what here you go <clears throat> And, and then, then forced like, him what to mean, eat it. Yeah, and forced him to eat it. Just forced it. Yeah. <laughs> you you had to know it was coming, though, because oh, they yeah. didn't call Moe, Moe's <laughs> name. And she's banging every director in Tokyo. Oh, I mean, yeah. She's, she's willing to eat cicadas. She's the, willing to eat cicadas. Eating those she's cicadas. willing to. Yeah, she's willing <laughs> to eat other undisclosed items. Um, so you, you knew that was what's, what was happening. You knew that was uh, 100% what was going to happen. I mean, you never know. Like, they could have done some, like, fucking dumb shit where they... Like, I honestly thought that if they didn't choose Moe and only had Maki, I thought it would have been a stupid development, but... I mean... Yeah, like, un- unnecessary they, they did, conflict. They did that. Yeah. And it was just like, well, that was fucking mean, but... Yeah, that was just ruthless. I mean, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, if she gets called and Moe doesn't, like, there's going to be some new conflict this late in the season, like, I don't think it's going to happen. I'm like, are they really going to do the whole call people out? And then anybody who gets called out is like failed. And they do it. I'm like, God, this is brutal. Like, this is so vicious. And then she starts crying on the, on the train home. And then she comes back. And like you said, she's just like, yeah, I failed. Let's do this now. I'm ready to be a handy woman. (laughs) Well, it's not, it's not brutal. It's life. Yeah. (laughs) One thing I did see through this episode was I started to notice like, yeah, last episode, the end felt very rushed in terms of Maki's development, but it kind of was like the setup to this episode, which Mm -hmm. I still don't agree with how they went about it. But I mean, like given like the amount of time they had, I guess, you know, it's it makes sense. But at the same time, like you do see a lot of change in her character this episode so much so, like, even through the play, where I'm like, mm-hmm. I have never seen this side of her throughout the whole, like, last 20-something episodes. And all of a sudden, like, you see this, and then even the characters themselves say it. They're like, I have never seen this side of you, Maki. And it's like, yeah, like, neither have, uh, like, we, the viewers. like Neither have has Maki. <laughs> Well, she's clearly seen it, and her father's seen it because you know, like he's just like you keep acting. I like you used you, to you. smile more. Yeah, like essentially. So it's like seeing <laughs> yeah, her she act in that play, and she was smiling and like acting happy. I was like, holy shit! Like that is yeah, like so I weird. Guess, uh, no longer. I guess it just mocking. takes. It just takes your soul being crushed and your dreams finally like being stamped out permanently to actually like enjoy your life. So I guess that's a life lesson, boys. Just yeah. fail at, fail miserably <laughs> at the thing you love and, and you'll be a better person. That that was that was like a weird lesson that I thought happened in this episode was she was like, Oh, well, my dreams are crushed. It's time to go and do and like settle is essentially what right. that message of this episode was and i'm yeah. just like yeah damn that's so brutal but like <clears throat> i took a real, different like, message life, from that right? i took a different message from that and it's your first dream got crushed and so you can't do that like she wants to do the acting but she can't so instead of just letting her dream be crushed she's gonna bring her dream into whatever she has to do now so she's being the handy woman and she's gonna bring her dream into it so rather than chasing her dream she's Bringing the dream in, boom! Different message, more positive. Yeah, she's gonna she's gonna live in this podunk town and you know teach high school drama and <clears throat> eventually. I'm not do gonna. Nothing. I believe it. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, but I she definitely never like the character as a whole just never struck me as like an actress type character. She always seemed like she'd be a better actress, actor, teacher, like an acting troupe, like. Drew said it was super obvious that that was going to come about. Um, but she always seemed like she'd better be better at that, especially when she was talking to Moe and when she was talking to um, Rubiko. And she was like, well, it's about the message. You know, she seemed more prone to being able to do that than that's actual acting, those, so. those who can't do teach. And that's and those be who can't her teach, <laughs> teach gym, teach P.E. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you, School of movie. Rock. Thank you, School of Rock. Jack Black. Tonight. Jack Black. <laughs> uh, 
But uh, all in all, like besides, it, it was. I thought it was a really good episode. Uh, I thought it was much better than last week's episode. It was vicious, and then it was heartwarming, <clears throat> and then Santa Claus came in at the end and he fixed the drum. Yeah, it was heartwarming. You didn't yeah. feel anything <clears throat> at it, Drew, because you're dead inside. He stated yep. that himself. I'll, I'll be. Inside. I'll be the very first person to admit that. Like, <laughs> My insides no, are no dead. No issues here. No issues here, boys. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on from this heartwarming stuff to some comedy. Uh, new game this week was pretty funny. We finally got some, uh, like, what? I don't know if it was all funny, but no. I mean, but go, go like, ahead. <laughs> so, so I thought the <clears throat> what happened at the end was definitely funny, and like. The whole inner monologues of all the different people espe- near the end was hilarious. I was laughing the whole time, especially when they kept showing Urahara's face and he had that weird, like, wicked Wait. smile and he looked like he's going to murder somebody. Are you talking about gamers? No. Oh, yeah, I'm talking about gamers. Oh, oh that's fuck. why I was confused because it was like... I'm mixing up new game and gamers. <laughs> oh. Oh, so we're going to talk <laughs> about new game and not <laughs> gamers. Um, yes, you're right. It wasn't all funny. I was like, wow, funny you're kind of dead inside, too. <laughs> yeah, it was, generally... yeah, it was funny. I was going with it. <laughs> but generally, this one was a little more serious than, than Gamers was indeed. Um, so, yeah, ignore that, everybody. Just ignore <laughs> that. 7.5% 7. by 5% volume. 7.5%, guys. <laughs> 7. I, 5 I don't see anything wrong with anything that you said other than the title. And the character names? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, the sinister we are smile. In this game. <laughs> <laughs> He's making yeah. this game. With these the first, the first, the first aspiring character designing. The first, uh, the first male to ever uh, join Eagle Jump. Oh yeah, <laughs> ever. Well, ever. You, don't, you you don't read the manga, so like you don't know that they're just in a different department. No, there's uh, no males in general. It's uh, an all female. No, they're in a different Japan. department with like with a with a homosexual character that really likes them. So he's like the 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 male equivalent <laughs> of a. Uh, the director, I forgot her what her name is. A homosexual character that really likes the the, the males, yes, or the female. Oh, the okay. Males. I was like, okay, I was like, they don't like the. It, it's like a homosexual character that really likes the females. Like yeah. that doesn't make he, any sense. He's like the male equivalent of the director in, in New Game. <clears throat> Got it. Yeah. So, uh, New Game, um, this time. Let me shift gears now away from gamers. Um, who uh, uh, Drew? You want to talk about what happened and give us like <laughs> what you thought about why it was funny? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> why not? <laughs> Let's do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> basically, we have like uh, a big conflict uh, that pops up uh, within this episode. Basically, Alba, um, who is the main character designer, who gets the job because of Co. Um, you know, they collaborate, but it. Alba's idea co helps. She's the character designer, and you, what what have you. The blonde with the um, panties. And, yeah, co. Yeah, blonde panties. Um, yeah. And so basically, um, the producer um, of the company or the co- producer's representative comes to Eagle Jump and says, basically. Alba's un- this unknown person, this unknown artist. She's been working in the industry for a year. She cannot draw the first key visual to a new IP game because we have to, you know, show with one image how great this new IP from this company is. Because everybody's used to fairies. Um, and when fairies <laughs> started, the reason why Ko, who is in the same situation as Alba is now, um, you know, her first, um, character design, lead designer, things like that. The company was unknown. There were no expectations. You can draw whatever the fuck you want. Um, this time there's more money at stake and I totally agree with the production company. I'm like, yes, do not let Alba draw the key visual because whatever she comes up with is not going to be as good as either Ko or a professional well-known artist and lo and behold that is exactly what happens ko's image is perfect it shows it shows you know the teddy bears the only thing that they are allowed to release on the game it shows the mechanic um uh peko you know cutting open the bear in order to gain their power with the scissors or whatever and it's a cute image. The game's supposed to be cute. Um, different things like that. But it, it shows everything you need to show. Whereas Alba's image, 
Pecco in a suit with a bunch of bears around her says nothing about the game. Um, so that's the kind of resolution that we get. They end up picking, a, if you watch past the credits, uh, Ko ends up getting the nod. They have a contest. Um, Alba never had a chance. Um, never in my mind did she have a chance either. I mean, it makes for good conflicts, but at the end of the day, it's one year of experience versus eight, and you're going to lose every time. Um, <clears throat> the thing I did like about the episode, though, was... Um, I think I even wrote, I want to fudge uh, uh, Nenichi, is she completes her game, oh. and then the uh, the hijinks that uh, revolve around that are hilarious. Um, I hear groans from you, Rolanda. Are you not, are you not shipping uh, Nenichi? No, I fucking hate her. <laughs> <laughs> Why? She's, like, so fucking annoying. I know annoying. this. It, yeah, she's the best. She's the best. <laughs> of course Drew would like her. Of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, she, they, they actually even also said that Alba never had a chance. The, the producer, she was like, can I do, you know, can we have a contest? And she's like, no. And then the director's like, sure, we can do it, but it's not going to change the outcome. Yeah. It's, it's a foregone so conclusion. Be, yeah. They're like, yeah, it's we're over. not going to yeah. choose so it even, even if it's it was, better. It, <laughs> yeah. Even if what you make, <laughs> it was never, amazing, it was never close, but we're never gonna, we're never gonna like pick you maybe in eight years, but not right now. And then it was nice to see Kobe all mad for Alba. Uh, I mean, like it, it was nice mm-hmm. for the person with the experience and some sort of leverage to be like, this is bullshit. And then Alba was like, well, I get it, but this sucks. But at least let me. That's what, try that's to what, that's what I was. Ha- that's what I was happy with is like <clears throat> Alba kind of knows her place. I mean, it's not, and I agree. It's not right. I mean, she's the character designer, but when you think about it, this is going to be like a quote, triple a title or whatever. Um, from a though? big, a big yeah. in Japan, maybe I don't like know. The, like, um, just uh, think of fairies like fa- Final Fantasy, essentially. Yeah, just like yeah. think of it that way. Um, yeah, but I'm just thinking of the premise. The, is it really going to be that good? <laughs> well, no one. I mean, knows. I would play the game. I, th- I, th- I think it's better. It was a better idea than fairies. Fairies is a standard JRPG, whereas this sounds interesting. It sounds like a Kirby game, but with like kawaii girls and shit like that. I think it would be cool. With well, destroying um, plushies. I think it. <laughs> yeah. In in terms of how this episode. <laughs> like pans out like in the beginning we have them talking about like oh alba when you do the key visuals like oh yeah oh yeah you have to do the key visuals for this remember you're the char- main character designer <laughs> everyone's setting it up and i was like holy shit they're like really setting this up to fall like when they started saying that i was like this is the episode where this is coming in because like that like the manga is for coma like they don't do any of that like you know setting up shit so like as soon as they started mm-hmm. talking about oh alba when you do the character designs i'm like this is the episode where they do it and um, <laughs> I'm just like, it fuck, it comes and I'm just like, oh man, this is going to be brutal. And then like, I don't know how impactful the scene was for you guys where there's like the whole montage where they have like the opening song playing and she's mm-hmm. like trying her best, mm-hmm. you know, drawing the, her version of the key, like the key visual. She's working her hardest. She's, it's going on. And then in my head, I'm just like, I know it's going on, <laughs> what's going to happen. So I'm just like. Ooh, ah, uh, and so like it kind of affects how I feel during that sequence because I'm just like, I know it's gonna happen to you, so this is really, ooh. So I don't know if you guys want to talk about how you felt during that montage or like how they were trying to. Well, I knew I knew it was gonna happen, so I was like, this is pointless. That's how I. I mean, it's it, it's kind of like a cool, feels good moment for <laughs> Alba. I mean, she's like getting kind of her confidence and her stride, but I'm like, you're just gonna get shot down and destroyed. Like, <laughs> it, it is what it is. Um, I, I mean, I, I like Alba and I want her to succeed, but at at the end of the day, it's. This is, and this is my logic brain. It's eight years of experience versus one. There's there's no way in hell you... And they even kind of... It's not a direct foreshadowing, but they even kind of talk about it earlier in the season where um, they're trying to draw the queen and Alba just like, oh, it's queen. It's an older lady. Uh, that's That makes sense to me. And they she keeps drawing her, keeps drawing her, and it sucks. And Ko's going to give um, you know her recommendation of what her queen would look like. And she's like, wait, you know, you need to learn and you need to figure it out. And I appreciate Ko for that because Alba does need to learn. She can't just have her hand held the entire time. Um, 
And so she eventually comes to the conclusion that, oh, if I draw her as a little girl, you know, that might be more relatable. That would be cool for the main character and things like that. And then Ko, and she goes, you know, Ko, what would you have drawn? And she draws, without even skipping a beat, a little girl, just like what Alba drew. So, I mean, Ko is, you know, eight years or 15 steps ahead of Alba, uh, regardless. Um so I mean, get, getting back to you know the scene and things like that, it's just like I knew it was going to happen. So it's like this is nice, <clears> but <throat> at the end of the day, they're not <clears throat> picking your art. Sorry. <laughs> I knew she was going to get declined. Like she wasn't going to get picked for the thing. I kind of saw the whole sequence as just like character development for her. It was kind of like, um, well, she's she's not going to get it, but she's uh, like she's you know working her hardest and she's just growing as a person kind of so and you saw that all throughout the episode where she was like <clears throat> oh here um when she was talking to ko and she's like don't treat me like a child you know like a couple yeah. bitter moments aren't gonna you know i can handle them or whatever and even she was like oh wow you know good for you sort of thing um and then that bitter so moment comes immediately after <laughs> yeah like right after i do have to say that Boom. i think alba like because of all this if it were like um if this were like a real life situation, she may not become as big or well known as Ko just because she has that person shadowing over her, but she would become better than her just because she has all of these like hardships to overcome where she would be able to come become better than her quicker or okay. on the same level quicker. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm I waiting. Uh, Go ahead. I was just gonna say I'm wait I'm waiting for uh, Alba to be like, well, I'm gonna go start my own co- uh, game company <laughs> with blackjack and, and hookers. Nanachi, <laughs> <laughs> waiting waiting for waiting for that for that conflict for 2D games with Nanachi, and she's like, yeah, this is the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, I program. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> the, it was weird how they kind of sequenced things this season. So a couple episodes ago, like you know, they're in the hot spring with, um. It's Alba, Nanechi, and their um, their friend from high school. And so technically, like, that's, like, a very condensed version of Volume 5, which was, like, a like a spinoff um, after the, the first season aired. It was, like, this spinoff that was basically about, like, Alba and Nanechi in their high school days. And um, in that, they kind of cover how Alba's, like, super inexperienced and doesn't exactly have the natural talent like their high school friend is essentially teaching alba like you know the shading one. and like proportions and you know like all this like technical art stuff and like she's kind of more of like a like an art <coughs> genius in the sense that like ko is one because like they kind of just mm-hmm. get it and you know like stuff they draw is like pretty good already whereas like alba like has to like really like refine herself and work hard and figure so her own method. Yeah, they kind of like input that character development for Alba into this arc. It's like an episode, not really an arc, but you know, like it's still like a story arc. They put that development to kind of show like, oh, she still has a lot to to work on. Like she's still a work in progress, but she has someone that's kind of leading her along. Someone that like knows how to do this she's got eight years of experience she's got natural talent and she can kind of shape alba into like becoming like who she wants to be in a in a sense mm-hmm. who alba wants yeah, to be yeah. yeah yeah she can yeah she's definitely getting a lot of help from her and then alba's perseverance is gonna make her just really good in the long run mm-hmm. so <clears throat> in all i thought it was a cool episode you know hilarious just you know just like drew thought it was so funny when she got shot down. No, I'm just yeah, it was so funny when I she have was a just soul. crying. <laughs> so when's the Nene, when's the when's the Nenichi spinoff? That's oh, what God. I'm waiting It's for. never gonna I hope happen. Never. <laughs> it's shark it's shark n- backpack. N- n- never you know, gonna happen. Two two D two two D games. Um, you know, craggy, annoying voice. Like I love it. Yeah. All about it. Yeah, you would. Just like you, just like you loved Sigiri, mm-hmm. and her inability to walk up and down stairs. Yeah. No, we all agreed Elf Yamada was the best. <laughs> it's Elf true. Yamada. It's tr- well, you know, by the end there could be argument for for forgot her name now. For Sigiri, yeah. No. No, god. Yeah, no. for Sigiri. No, the other one. <laughs> senpai. The other one. Senpai Kohai. Muramasa. Senpai Muramasa Senpai. 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 
I fucking yeah, hate that, that character. Masamune. You guys don't even remember her name. <laughs> fat Masa. Fat, that's why fat you remember Masamune. her name. Yeah, because I hate her. <laughs> yeah, that's whenever you, like, you hate characters, you like you fat Masamune. <laughs> oh yeah, Fat Masamune. Oh from god. Oh, fucking Masamune Kun's Revenge. Yeah. God. All right. So, so moving don't, on. Don't don't call me Masamune. I'm just fa- this fat pudgy idiot. Don't so, call me that. so moving on. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna skip gamers again and just keep that suspense of what we were gonna talk about. And I'll go to Classroom of Man. the Elite before we Man. get off on a, a tangent here. Before Drew gets um, off on Ma- Masamune. Yeah. Man. <laughs> on Man. Fat Masamune. Dude, his favorite. Um, so in Classroom of the Elite, um, this one, it was it was serious. It was more serious. Uh, we had Sakura being assaulted by no, camera guy. No, it was guy. funny. It was, yeah. Yeah, Drew, yeah, Drew that was funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so we had Sakura, her, her fan who keeps messaging her was creepy camera dude. And he Which came and he assaulted her on campus. Oh yeah, obvious. Mm-hmm. That was so mm-hmm. obvious. He goes and he assaults her in an alleyway, and then he, and then um, I, Ayano Koji. That how the fuck do you yeah, say his name? You said it right. Ayano Koji. Ke- he comes and saves the day, as we all expected, because he he was had her contact number so he could GPS track her, and he showed Soccer. up and he got the guy That's arrested. That's what he does. That's <clears throat> yep, what he does. Showed up and saved the day, but one of the cool scenes I thought was when um, the teacher and um, uh, black haired girl Susan, uh, Susan? Yeah. is that yeah. the the, mm-hmm. the class rep Horita. Horita. Yeah. yeah yeah her she was talking it's to the teacher on the roof <clears throat> and I mean we all saw it coming but the teacher was like you should learn get to like learn about him while you can because uh, she was like I think he's the most so she and then the one thing I know she said the school is for like is for people with defective aspects and class he has D. he's the or class, oh, class D, D yeah. class yeah. D. Yeah, is and he's the mm-hmm. most effective. I knew they were gonna put that. <clears throat> yeah. But uh I was like, it, it, it's cool that they finally said it, you know, and they're not just like, Yeah, he's actually just a genius and he's bored with his life, so he's trying to help out class D. I'm glad they didn't go that route. So it was nice. Um, well that's how they're gonna say he's defective. Maybe. But then he had that flashback to when he couldn't help that he was just watching that kid. I think die. I think going off of like what Orlando just said, I think like he has like this savior complex, um, and his role and the reason why he is quote average at everything is because he wants to help those who can't help themselves sort of deal. That's why he agrees to help uh, Suzune. That's why, you know, he goes and helps us uh, Sakura. That's why he's doing all the things that he's doing to kind of like save his class and elevate them because we get that short flashback. And he's like, don't, don't you, don't you fucking talk so to don't me. Don't pry into my class, life, bitch. Don't you fucking do it. Um, <laughs> Except that, yeah, just and, uh, like that. That's the feeling you get, but he does not even say it that way. Except he, he says, says it normally. <laughs> hey, don't pry into my life, please. <laughs> like, is essentially what he says. And but just you get like, that vibe. You get the vibe. <laughs> it's because yeah, they put the yeah. shadow over his eyes. They were like, shadow over. Oh, it's intense now. Mm. His eyes look exactly the same, but there's there's darkness yeah. there. All right, it's intense. And, and yeah, and I mean, and so in, in that uh, in that respect, he is defective, um, and he plays it off uh, with this common anime trope of the protagonist who doesn't care about anything, um, which is kind of live a normal life, dude. And and so do half the anime protagonists, and then they have a harem form around them, and he hates it. And I'm just like, he, I don't understand. Well, he probably secretly <laughs> loves anyway. it. We just can't see his emotions. Because his <laughs> right, eyes are right. dead. Because he watched a kid die when he, he was a gained, child. He gained a he gained a hair member in this episode. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, he sh- well, he sh- he shorted un unrequi- unrequited love uh, for, for yeah. poor little Sakura. But she lost the Megane. Um, R.I.P. All you Megane lovers. Um, but yeah, I. It was it was a good episode. Um, I want to know um, the student council president uh, Suzune's <clears throat> brother. I want to know his alternative motives. Like he's like join the student council, and he knows the answer is going to be no. Um, he goes like, "Nah, I'm good." And then he's like, "Don't disappoint me, bitch." He's like, very like, well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, what's also interesting is uh, our class C, which seems like their like quote leader, the badass guy. Um, he meets up with your favorite character, Alec, um, girl with cane. Um, oh, yeah, girl with cane. She, she is so lit. She is so lit. I fucking love girl with cane, dude. 
just so rich awesome. girl with cane. Rich girl with cane. Like yeah, I can't afford surgery. Just around her, holding her umbrella, so she could hold her cane. Of like fucking weirdos. They're they're all fucking weirdos. Like. No, she's they're holding her umbrella. So like, cause she doesn't have two arms, so she can't cane with one hand and hold her umbrella. What's in her <laughs> other hand that they didn't show because this is rated PG was her glass of scotch and smoking pipe. All right, that was what was in the yeah, other hand, but they, they don't just, show they it. They blurred out. It was actually in her yeah, mouth. In the, the pipe was already in her mouth, but they just blurred it out. Oh, okay. They just erased yeah. it mm-hmm. for that scene. They can't for show PG. That. That's uh, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh. Can't show underage uh, smoking or drinking, no. but no. It, everyone knows it's there. Censored. It's, it's yeah. obviously there. Uh, just like just like in the uh, the club, quote unquote, that they had, and they were drinking sparkling water. Okay, <laughs> oh, yeah. right. Sparkling water. Out of champagne water. glasses. Yeah, out yeah, of yeah, champagne glasses. Water. Yeah, let's drink this Perrier <laughs> out of these champagne glasses. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, let me get my cane and my monocle. Excuse me. I'm so, I'm so fucked up. <laughs> uh, I'm so drunk off this water. <laughs> well, think about it. She's got a cane, so if she's drunk, she has a way to stabilize herself while she's walking. That's true. And an excuse when the cops are like, how come you can't walk straight? Do you not see the cane? I'm clearly <laughs> broken. Like, are you judging me right now? I'm going to sue you. Wow, it's That's judging like- in 2017. <laughs> That's a really good idea, actually. <laughs> I think um, I'm too drunk. I need a cane. <laughs> <laughs> I think though the thing that pissed me off the most about this episode was how easily the three idiots from Class uh, C were like influenced by their They're bluff. Because like they could have like they shouldn't have just like given up on the court case. They should have gone to their leader, and he would have said. Yeah, the reason why I had you fight him in that hallway was because there are no cameras in that building, you stupid idiot. Like, well, they, why would you give up on the case? Though, because when they saw the cameras, though, they were like, wait, there are cameras here? Because they see, they were surprised. Yeah, so call the bluff. Be like, you bought these cameras. But like, they're henchmen, and henchmen have no spines. Yeah. So. Well, that's why they need to go to the leader who has brains, and he, and he would then go into the building <laughs> well, and be like... Hey, hey, watch. Well, I he knocked tried this to. off. The, well. the, they're, they're henchmen. Mm-hmm. So they have no <laughs> IQ. <laughs> they tried to call the dude and then she was like, no. And then they were like, oh, I'm going to punch you. And they're like, do it. We got cameras. He's, and um, like, Fuck. <clears throat> and then the main, the main guy, though, for them is actually pretty smart because he's like, I want to see what the school does when an expulsion happens because like he's in the first year. He doesn't know. Um, so he's like, I want to see how the school reacts. So that, that was pretty good. I mean, I know we've talked about that before. It's like, uh, you know, what does happen? Can you not advance? Does your whole class then get expelled? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, what happens? <laughs> um, so he's at least smart in that respect. So you kind of respect him as a villain, which is cool. Um, I don't know if he's as cool as a uh, girl with cane. No, um, no one is because, cause she's, she's pretty great. No one's um, as cool. What about the, no what one about has the, a the, the, that hen, not henchman, the, the boss dude's, um, right hand black man. <laughs> oh, who only speaks don't English. Don't hate yeah. me. Boss orders. Boss orders. <laughs> don't hate me. Like he looks like, he looks like he's like 35 <laughs> and he's like in high school. Like <laughs> t- tonight, dude. He's pretty lit, but not as lit as as Monocle Kane Hat Girl with with uh, smoking and her, and uh, scotch. We did we didn't see in her posse though a uh, huge buff uh, bald guy uh, with her though. Yeah, he's um, taking care of other business. Yeah. Oh, he he's not allowed to go out into the rain. No, no. She can't show his her head is too strength. bald. Yeah, his yeah. head is too bald. He'll get he'll catch yeah. a cold. <laughs> Uh, regardless, I, I think it was a cool episode. I think the biggest thing to take away from is like what you said, Alec, is um, the conversation with the teacher. And he's like, you better fucking pay attention to Ayana Koji because he's someone who you can learn from. Um, also, um, Sakura is just going to be like on his dick now. Oh, yeah. yeah. For the rest of this. Yeah. The which is honestly like the best one to have on your dick. Yeah. So. The grab. I, I don't like I don't like her the, hair. The if, if she. Uh, <laughs> if she if she changed her hair to be better, I like uh, Ichinose, the uh, the blonde uh, from the other class with all with the, the money. millions of money. Because she's a prostitute. Drew likes long hair. Drew likes prostitutes because and that's well, blonde. Sakura has long hair, but she... Drew likes long <laughs> blonde hair. Yeah, there there you go. She's like she's like uh, Chitoge. She's a gorilla. Um, Drew Drew you know. Drew's like if she's blonde, has long hair, and she has big boobs. That's Okay, yeah. hand emoji. <laughs> there it is. Didn't even have to say it. Everybody knows. Everybody knows I, that you're gonna say okay, hand emoji. 
<laughs> okay, and hand just emoji. Uh, and just throw in like sadomasochism in there yeah. too. And, yeah, you know, just have her st- stomp on his balls, and then he's just like, "All right, I'm gonna marry this one." <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. she'll do that every yep. day. <laughs> yep. But yep. <laughs> so yeah, I guys, definitely... you got you guys, you, you know me too well. You you guys. Oh, so. <laughs> I I thought it was a good episode as well. Um, I definitely am interested to get more like uh, background story into the main character, though. I think it'll be cool just to see exactly what's going on. It'll probably be what everyone expects, <clears throat> but that's okay because I still want it. Um, but I hope there's more to him than they're like making out and there's like actually some crazy defect. It's like, holy shit, he suicidally killed and then he killed himself. Like, I don't hope that, but that would be crazy. <laughs> that that'd be so, like, that'd be so weird. I'm not like, you know, but that would be like a crazy turn of events. And I'm going to tell you right now that if that happened, we all would be like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> yeah, and I'm just saying. Like, well, where is this going to go now? Oh, everyone else yeah. sucks. <laughs> yeah, everyone sucks. <laughs> no, Dude. but that's like she would learn from him and then they'd all band together as a group and it'd be a, a story about group effort after somebody taking their life. Bam. There you go. I don't know, dude, do you, but it's crazy. Do you know... So this is totally off topic, like totally out there. All right. I was just looking at uh, Ichinose's uh, voice actress, and I know why I love her. Yeah. It's because she, she is she uh, Car- she's Karen's. She voices yeah. everybody, but she's also Karen's voice actress. I mean, fucking Kirino Mosaic, um, the British Grill, who's an idiot, Desu. Yeah. Uh, love her. Love her. She voices um, Chitoge. She's also dude. she. She's also <laughs> Chitoge. <laughs> <laughs> from Nisekoi. I mean, what what else could you want? Um, yeah, great greatness. Okay, he can, handy he emoji. can feel okay, the blonde. Handy he emoji. can feel the blonde in her voice. Is in her is voice? Is she blonde in real life? She's also no, no. Of course, she's not. too bad. Of course not. <laughs> too bad. If only dude. she could have dyed her hair blonde. That's a thing these days. You know, people love dyeing in, um, their hair. In rom com snafu, she's Yui, who is well. Besides my cinnamon bun, she's the best character in that Your show. Your cinnamon bun? Um, uh, she's okay. My cinnamon bun. No, he's talking about Iroha. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay. Who's the I best can't one? relate to any of this. Yeah, she's, she's, the, the, she's best the best. It's not even close. It's not even... It's not I even agree. She's the best competition. one. I'll just agree. Yeah, yeah you, don't, you don't even need <laughs> to watch it. I don't, don't even. Know. She, she's There's she's a she's who saves that second season because that second season was god awful. <laughs> anyway, except for her. Well, <clears throat> before we go too long, um, let's talk about our last show, Gamers, which we finally get to talk about. Um, not new game. New gamers. gamers. I don't want to talk about it. Anymore. New gamers. This one new was gamers. actually funny. This one was actually funny. Drew doesn't want to talk about it. I thought it was it. funny. You already spoiled no, it. Oh, you don't want to talk about it? Oh, spoiled I spoiled it. Early it. Early All right, Drew, you can leave. Uh, so Drew's going to leave us now. <laughs> Rolando and I are going to finish this episode up, and we'll, we'll see why you next week. <laughs> why, doesn't she, uh, why doesn't she voice Karen uh, in this show also? Because Karen's she, a good character. Just, you can't have two Karens voiced by the same person. Oh, fuck. It's impossible. That is the rule. It's the rule. That is the rule. <laughs> also, you can't have a blonde character not named Karen in anime. That's true. That's also true. Is that a blonde, uh, half half Japanese, half yeah. uh, uh, Japanese, um, half Japanese, half Japanese, half Japanese, half Japanese. Yeah, half, so one hundred percent Japanese, four quarters Japanese, half half Japanese, half western. Western. Um, I was trying not to say like uh, South not to Carolina because that's like that's where um, Chitoge vacations. Um, oh yeah, and, and I know, and, and I know that. Anyway. Okay then. <laughs> so we've got the uh, seven seven point five percent two hour, two hour two two hours of sleep. Seven, that's, uh, that's so we've got the what, we got the one hundred percent Japanese here. Karen. Or we gotta thing. we gotta name we gotta name this episode like Kinpatsu something like uh, <laughs> something along those lines. We'll we'll figure out something good, <laughs> something. But so this episode of Gamers, it was funny. Um, uh, again, we had more misunderstandings among everyone, and then a lot of them were just in their heads. Uh, my favorite part of the episode was the actually just the whole ending where they went through um, uh, Pink Hair Bitch, uh, Urahara, Aguri. and then Aguri. Aguri, yeah, and then uh, Seaweed Head. Um, so, Chikey. 
Yeah, so they they just kept going into what they were thinking, and I liked the little side note, and it was like, can't get that bad, and then it was like, it will. It will, yeah. <laughs> I like that little, like, Every time, every time I saw side. that, I fucking laughed. <laughs> yeah, that, that got hilarious. me every time. They didn't overdo it, which, I that's the one thing I like about the show that I think they do really well, is they don't take jokes too far to where you're like, okay, like, that's enough. They, they take it just far enough, and then they, like, do something with it. So they're like, it will. On like both of them, it will, and then and that's, then it, it does. That's kind of like an Arrested out. Development, like thing. You know how like mm. in Arrested Development, like Ron Howard will just come over, like a uh, voiceover, and then they're like, "There's no way this could happen," and then he just goes, "It will." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I loved Arrested Development. They they were that was another show. The first two seasons, at least for sure, that did a really good job of not killing jokes. Yeah. They just like they did it just enough, and then once it started, you were like, it, it it was at the point where it could get old. They'd stop and then like bring it back at the perfect time, like the banana yeah, like, stand. Like yeah. there's always money in the banana stand, and then like they keep talking about the banana stand. And then spoilers, it lights on fire. They light it on fire. And he's like, no, there was money lined in the walls of the banana stand. And you're like, no oh, touching, fuck. <laughs> no touching, no touching. That was, <laughs> that's the iconic line that, that line of that. Sh- like, if you need to know n- nothing else about that show, you just need to get no touching. That's all you have to get from that show. No touching, no touching. Don't touch people. If you're visiting them in jail. That's- oh, Michael, how much is a banana? Like what? $10. <laughs> I love that show. Anyway, so they did a they do a really good job in gamers of just not overdoing it. And and uh <laughs> this whole episode was just funny. Like, what did you guys think of it? Did you guys like the ending? Cuz like with with the uh, what's his name? Almano and Karen. Yeah. Where they were talking. Will you will you go out with me? Yes, of course. Wait, yes, I said that wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen. Get, get Sorry, so I said obvious. my line wrong. Yeah, so obvious. Get fucked. Oh yeah, what, it was so obvious he was gonna say that. But I, I like the class reaction after that too, because he's like, "Will you go out with me?" And then she's like, "Yes, of course." And then the class is like, "Huh?" <laughs> like, and the, everybody, like, like the three friends too, like Chiaki, yeah. uh, um, and agree. They're like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> yeah, no, I was thinking after that, you know that they're all just sitting there and their minds were just blown. Like, they're every, all three of them, they were like, my brain just exploded. I don't know what just happened. Because, like, well, I mean, Uri, 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 Uri like, Hara knew cheating. it was going to happen, though. Well, yeah, yeah well, he, he probably had an inkling, but. He he knows the most, like, he, he like, has the most <clears throat> viewer knowledge, I guess you could say, except in mm-hmm. terms of how Amano and Aguri's hit, relationship hit, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, Chiaki, mind blown, for sure. Uh, Augury, for sure. And then the faces, though, that Augury and Urahara were making at each other, like looking super, super guiltily guilty. at each other. And their face was like, <laughs> it looked like they were about to poop themselves. To me. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you guys, you don't look guilty. You look like you have to shit. Like, mm, I have diarrhea, but I want to see what's going to happen. <laughs> Like that's, that's what it looked like to me. And it was just, it was cracking me up the whole time. Um, and then of course in the classroom, Urahara's like sinister face while he's like <laughs> about his plan or whatever. Just was, they all was have that moment though. Like yeah. him, Augury and Chiaki, they just all have mm-hmm. the same fucking moment. It's just like, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that was the other thing about it too. All those three have like all that, mo- that moment. And then Karen's like kind of freaking out. Like, what does he want to talk to me about? And then they show him on and he's just like taking notes. He's like, <laughs> like whatever. <laughs> Typical <laughs> all oblivious the other- <clears throat> main character. <clears throat> yeah. 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 But we, we are such a good character though, because mm-hmm. like he, he's so fucking smug and he like thinks he knows like everything that's going on. And then he just gets shat on again yeah. and again. <laughs> And, and again and it's just so fucking funny like it, it, he's like he's an awesome character but uh the, the one thing i didn't like uh, yeah i mean the one thing that i didn't like about this episode and you can see like where the budget went to this episode but like the first like 15 minutes when they're like in the coffee shop and stuff like the animation quality was just so fucking bad like uh it was like hard <clears throat> to watch it was so bad I, I don't usually notice that kind of thing unless it's like awful and it was like 
really bad. I noticed like, a if, little as if anybody, well. yeah. If if yeah. anybody like didn't notice that, go watch like the first like five to ten minutes of the episode, and when they're in the coffee shop, and like you can see like blurred lines on things that are supposed to move, and it's just like it's just really poorly done i mean the, 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 i forgot about it when i watched like, the end of the episode but like that was like hard to watch the um one thing i'll say to pay attention to that i noticed is watch look at augury's eyes they were like cross-eyed half the time they looked super yeah. unnatural i was like what's wrong with your right eye girl like <laughs> did you like get in an accident or something because that one was like, well, like a mono yeah like a mono and like uh <laughs> chiaki's like hands are like drawn so poorly like it's just it's really bad well we all we've all seen Shiro, shirobako so we know why they just sent it yeah, to the really no, that's that's what i was that's, really, what, I was, really that's what i was people, thinking yeah. too like <laughs> they sent it to the really shitty cheap people that could do it cheap fast people. yeah they're like they, this done they're like being, they're well in shirobako they're even more racist they're like send it to vietnam the fucking <laughs> the vietnamese people will draw it i'm like holy shit oh yeah they outsource it to like vietnam and like korea and shit in korea yeah man um man anyway. i forgot what i was gonna say now um all in all it was a good episode, good episode. it was hilarious this show like I just think this show is hilarious. It's definitely that one show. It's just that yeah. you don't pay attention to the time on for sure. Yeah, <clears throat> it's just con- it's consistently funny, mm-hmm. and that's like like the the subject matter like isn't anything new, but like the way they like present the jokes, like all the things we've been talking about, it's just like it's consistently funny. So I I, I enjoy watching it, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's it's surprising too because the jokes they're using are like the same similar very similar or the same jokes so far throughout all the episodes yet they don't get old where a lot of shows <clears throat> they'll do the same jokes over and over and it's like okay yeah can we get some more jokes like please like uh Renai Bokun did that for me where I was just like this is getting old like the the mm-hmm. the girl with the knives yeah, was stab, like all right stab. enough with mm-hmm. enough with the knives already but like they've been doing the same everyone's having misunderstandings for the entire show uh, but they they like add little things like that it will you know sort of thing to yeah. to the joke and it just refreshes it for us and it's it's I, this show is great it's great i think like i i said this i think when we were i think we were talking about renai bokun actually but it may be a different show but like um it's the comedic timing that's really important in comedy so it's like mm-hmm. you can't just like a funny joke isn't funny if you tell it poorly right so yeah um like part of that is the timing and so they're um wait did you say somebody's name when you coughed or were you just i said nick (laughs) Nick. (laughs) um uh yeah for forgetting forgetting nick's uh you know comedic timing um like the the actual comedic timing of like how they tell jokes in these comedies it like has a lot to do with whether you think the joke falls flat or where you th- whether you think it's hilarious. And so this show definitely has like the, the whole formula down for sure. Mm-hmm. And the VAs do a really good job of like in their presentation of the jokes too. Yeah. It's like, I don't the 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 way they do the laugh for like Urahara it wasn't like over the top. It was like perfect how they had his little like, <laughs> like while he's trying to be quiet in class. So I definitely agree that they, they have the, the whole comedy timing. It's down pat. It's, it's really good. Um, but moving, let, let's move on. We're going to run out of time here soon. And, uh, I know, uh, drew, you had one thing you wanted to mention about Kakeguri specifically. Yeah. Yeah, so if you want to see, like, large, huge amounts of uh, Lady Cum, go ahead and watch uh, this <laughs> oh, week's episode of, uh, I didn't see it <laughs> of Kakeguri. Um, so Get ready for Lady Cum. I'm going to be ready for Lady Cum. And enjoy that. It's like, it's like literally like you could fill up a swimming pool I'm with it. Like, be that's ready how, that's for how much Lady Cum there is. a lot of female piss. Pee-pees. Yeah. A lot of pee-pees. It's piss. A pool. Um, <laughs> Olympic size? Have... Is it Olympic size? <clears throat> it's 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 might not be Olympic size, but it's like maybe maybe like uh, half of it. You oh, know, well, I'm surprised. Can quite fill up the y- YMCA pool, but you know, I'm surprised. I mean, like the <laughs> Olympics are coming to Japan in 2020. They need to get you know they need to fix their shit. Holy, <laughs> they need shit, to fill those pools. Well, 
I don't I don't know if that kind of that kind of liquid is like Olympic sanctioned. It might be too viscous oh, yeah. uh, for that. They might um, have to clean it out. But that's that's Jesus. yeah, that's uh, or or at least filter it, you yeah. know, send it through the Brita filter <laughs> and then and then it'll probably or be Or several right. thousand Brita Brita filters. And by Brita filter, he, no, just, Drew's just, just one, talking just about one. just like a lot just a whole line full of panties just like <clears throat> it's just going through it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is this is Japan. Yeah. We're talking. You can buy <laughs> panties out of a vending machine yeah that's a real thing that is actually true yes warm i warm fresh yeah, they'll warm, warm them panties. up for you <laughs> no, not not washed not, i want some washed. fresh warm unwashed panties <laughs> let me go to this vending still, machine still wet <laughs> <laughs> they've got a From factory behind this vending machine <laughs> they're just pumping out these panties god all right so anyways i have one thing i want to talk about too and that is actually <clears throat> restaurant to another world. Um, I know when I mentioned it last week or the week before, I don't remember. Um, I said that how much lady cum was in this episode? <laughs> there I, was no lady cum. There was none. I said that it was getting <laughs> kind of redundant, where it's like person comes in, eats food, and then goes about their day or whatever. And I was like, it's kind of boring. These last two episodes, I have to say. We're actually pretty fun to watch. Um, we finally found out who that third person or who the second waitress in the uh, in the uh, what is what is you know the image the picture oh, where being, yeah in the promotional image yeah in the pro- promotional image <clears throat> and we'll I'll, we'll post that in the video. Um, the key we art. finally find out who yeah the key art exactly that was the yeah, word Alba I was trying to it. think of Alba drew Alba it, could, yeah Alba drew um, it. after this is eight years later though, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, she, eight years later she Alba. took over <laughs> she took they over actually let her and, do things now yeah, she took over and she cucked a new employee herself Spoil- so spoilers uh, co dies <laughs> yeah yeah from mm. uh from sleeping without pants on in the she, office she got the flu she got the flu and died yeah so the, always the, the syphilis flu. The, the syphilis, syphilis flu. flu, yeah, from Rin. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she got God. it from Rin. So, so anyways, these last two episodes were pretty interesting to watch. I think that they they kind of went back to the how they did it <clears throat> in the beginning of the show, in the earlier episodes, where they had good stories behind each character. I felt like in the middle episodes, the stories behind the characters were kind of boring and just lacking in general. And so I felt like these last two episodes were much better. So I'm going to continue watching it and I hope it kind of keeps the same pace it has right now. But that's what I wanted to mention. If anyone was like, think asking what we thought about it or, you know, that sort of thing, I think it's back to kind of how it was at the beginning. And I'm definitely actually looking forward to next episode. So you actually reminded me talking about that, that, um, <clears throat> when I forgot to mention this when we were talking about new game, but I do believe in the next episode we are going to have the the those new characters that have been in the opening that and ending that we haven't seen yet. In new game? Yeah. I thought you said I thought you were gonna say Ko is gonna yeah, die. No, no, <laughs> yeah, no, no. That Drew is right. Damn. Ko is, is gonna die next Ko episode. Ko gets the syphilis flu next episode. It's actually what happens. Like, holy shit. He's like she, go, she goes blind and just like dies. <laughs> she got stabbed she in go- the eyes by Alba. <laughs> She gets syphilis flu, goes blind. Get for for, draw, for drawing that key visual, I gotta kill you. <laughs> she, see, what happened was uh, she went blind, and then she actually was trying to leave the building, but instead of going down, she accidentally pressed up, went to the roof, and then fell off the roof. Yeah, she... Uh, she instead was, of going out the front door. Yeah, she just walked <clears throat> off. Yeah, she's like, it's like a pretty cold tonight outside. episode. And there's, bam! And then Ab was like, ha, 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 now I can do the key art. <laughs> And then they're like, well, we already like uploaded we the already key art that, that she no. drew. So. And then she's like, oh, she's fuck. like, fuck, next year, next year. <laughs> and then they get a famous <laughs> illustrator. Mm. And then there's just a string mm. of just murders and Alba goes to jail. And that's the end of the show. So. That sounds like one of those like those Japanese like horror 2D horror games made in RPG Maker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like the premise for one of those games. <laughs> um so is there any other shows you guys want to like <clears throat> mention or I, we, we got um, Olympic size pool lady lady come uh, from Drew. Uh, I talked about mm-hmm. restaurant to another world. Rolando, do you have a show you would like to to mention? Uh, no, Are you good? I'm good. All right. 
Cool C- then. Centaur, centaur <clears throat> lady come. Centaur I, to I another mean, world. The, it, this was like the pool episode or whatever. It was just, oh, it was the fan service it, one. It was the fan service, but it wasn't really fan service. It was like more like because it's a bunch of animals. No, it was more like if you, <laughs> uh, if you think kids are cute, then you're like. Oh, that's so adorable. But there was like one of those episodes. It wasn't like, oh, man, like, look at those tits episodes. <laughs> <laughs> it was like that. All right. Ground gremlins. Yeah. So ground if, you like, gremlins. if you think children are cute. There you go. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, uh, I think that's all we've got today for Anime on Draft episode 20. Um, as always, check out our WordPress. It'll be uploaded here soon. Um, animeondraft.wordpress.com. Look for the update that it's up there <clears throat> on our Twitter at anime on draft. And then if you follow us on SoundCloud or YouTube or iTunes, you'll see those pop up in your, in your list and all that sort of cool stuff. But, uh, otherwise we hope you enjoyed this episode. <laughs> I know we did 7.5%. Um and tasty beer. So no sleep, no sleep till Brooklyn. Yeah, no, no sleep, sleep till, till Brooklyn. Brooklyn. And Drew's yeah. gonna pass out on the road in about yep. four hours while he's yep. driving to work. Yep. Yeah, he, he's driving to Brooklyn yep. actually. He's driving. Yep. To That's Brooklyn where he works. In yep. Four hours. Yep. yep. He drives to Brooklyn every yep. day. It's yep. crazy. It's crazy. And by Brooklyn, <laughs> it's, it's crazy Bro- Brooklyn boys. Bagel. Brooklyn Bagel Company. Brooklyn Water yeah. Bagel. Yeah. He's driving over there. <laughs> in Akihabara. In Akihabara. Yeah. In the middle of the Pacific Ocean. You took the the 94. Yeah. The 94 you took the 94 to north. Hawaii. 94 what? The 94, 94 north, north. The 94 north. north. To, to Hawaii. Hawaii. Yes, yeah. exactly. So anyways, with that, um, I bid everybody a wonderful day and enjoy the rest of whatever time of day it is when you finish watching this. Bye. Bye. Bye.